Welcome back to Murphy's Diesel Studio. I got my main man, Mr. Rod, here with me. Mr. Rod. Mr. Rod's my father. You can call me Hot Rod. <laughs> or sir. Or sir. So we had ourselves a little recovery. We had a tractor trailer. Not sure what happened. They called us a few days after the. Uh, I assume that he. You know, was driving down the highway, storm hit, bad weather. He took out some guardrail, went down the embankment about 200 and some, some odd feet, and then laid it on its side. It was super steep and super rugged. Uh, one thing I noticed is the, the camera did not do it justice. I don't know, if, did you notice that? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say actually. I'll let you have that. By all means. Yeah. Take the floor. Camera didn't do it any justice. There you have it, folks. Straight from the horse's mouth. All right, folks. Well, guess what day it is? It's recovery day. We got one way off down in the bottom of this son of a gun. <clears throat> the other towing companies turned it down. And uh, I see why now. Well, let's get out of here, huh, boys? <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and leave this one for the next company. Hot rods when you go. Yeah, That's right. The situation. We don't turn nothing down. Don't let it fool you, folks. This is steep. I Just, think I could get my truck down there. You think you could get your truck down there? <laughs> I think if I get that back on its wheels, I could drive it out. <laughs> so, we got to get that rolled over tractor trailer up and out of here. May not be able to do it in a day, but... Give us a couple hours. Huh? I said I pulled the drive shaft, it only took me four hours. I've never not pulled a drive shaft. About a $20 loss on the load? Yeah. Hit him pretty hard. What do you mean? Because it's all ramen? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Still in here he had a ride, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's probably still in there. Flip him over. It's pretty cute. Roll this trailer over, will we? We will. We will. Of course. There, Wild man. ride it was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a doozy getting up that some bitch. We're gonna want to get her on her wheels first. Sure is beautiful country out here, isn't it, folks? Colin, follow me around like a little lost puppy dog. <laughs> here, fella, hungry fella. Boy, it's just a remarkably beautiful day here in northern Arizona, isn't it? Where's this road you're talking about? Oh. 
faster. <laughs> hey, you guys are going to the, the cedar tree? See the little one? Right? Go all the way to it, round it, and back. That one? Why not something like uh, the little one to the right? Shoot that, up that, cliff and come back down. that what about that pine tree right there? I can do that. What's wrong with the little one? Look how far that is. Huh? Look how far that is. What? You guys are challenging each other to a fight race. Yeah, about to speak. And you can't run. How about to this little pine tree right here? That big that pinion right there. Or that pondo, huh? I can do that. Okay. <laughs> when this hits the ground. When this hits the ground, y'all go. Uh, let, me, let me catch it. What are you doing? We got skinny ham, porter, angle grinder. Got skinny, got skinny ham porter, aka angle grinder here. Um, <laughs> chop saws, son, and uh, he's about. A buck 25. He's 20 years old. And on this side, we got uh, Mr. Rod, aka Hot Rod. <laughs> he's about a buck 30. And he's 27 years old. They're going to have a foot race. Skinny Ham Porter thinks he could take him. <laughs> Rod said, Mr. Rod said, no way. Up. What are they doing? <laughs> Rod ain't even trying. <laughs> Either one of you guys went around the freaking park. It dips down. So? It's like a 20 foot drop. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Go look. The race is still going until somebody goes around the pine tree. It would have been a soft landing. All right, let's pick a different tree. How do you feel? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one right over there. Okay. Smoked his ass. <laughs> okay, now now we're gonna do hot rod beat him. In the short dash, we're gonna do a long distance. Uh, yeah, hot rod beat him in the short dash. So we're gonna test their stamina though. So right, no. you can call twenty minute break. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you go right now. Or you find a new job. <laughs> <laughs> and I built his brother for brute strength. Bucket so you could have dug down. I was trying not to have too much equipment out there because we didn't have a lane closure and I figured I could get that truck back up on the road without a lane closure and we did have like a shoulder closure that we put up ourselves some emergency lighting up there up the road I didn't want to have a lane closure just because uh, it's over the weekend and I just felt like we could get it done without the lane closure so
chop saw when you need them. drives out because the drive was actually detached on the bottom side and it was acting like a kickstand. We're trying to roll it over and it was acting like a kickstand. The bottom of the drive was pushing into the ground and it wouldn't let the tractor come over the drives. So that's, you see us run the cutoff saw and we cut the drives out, the, the front drive out. So we had to call Fenner, get the 1150 out here, a 50 ton, get a little bit more pull on it. Just a little too much for old war machine. So we've got Bootsloff with 9055. He's gonna be pulling on the rear of it. Fenner's gonna be pulling up the hill, and then I'm gonna be pulling diagonal uphill and back. And we're gonna try to get this drug up right here. You can see where we cleared it, where we cleared it with the skid steer this morning, got all the rocks out of there, made it nice. We're gonna drag it up there a little ways because we can't get enough upward pull on it to get it to roll over because it's fully loaded. So, got the second skid steer out here. We got some equipment out here today, boys. And if this ain't gonna do it, then we're gonna get some more shit and we're gonna get some bigger shit. And uh, this is coming out of here, you know, one way or another. So, stand by.
Finner on seam and and we got it rolled onto its wheels. Soon as we rolled it onto its wheels, the whole driver's side just collapsed and the floor gave out in it. Uh, the trailer was like a 96. It was an old, old trailer. And once it broke, uh, we didn't talk about it. I belly chained it, take a half inch chain and we run it the full length of the trailer from the bogies up to the landing gear. And basically what that does is it holds the floor together and we'll throw some blocks underneath the belly chains, tighten those belly chains up really tight. One, one thing uh, with a recovery like this, it was, we didn't like step it off or anything. I got 250 foot of wire rope on each one of my heavy trucks, each one of my rotators. And we had about six or seven wraps left on the winch drums when we started pulling. And one thing about doing a recovery like that is it's difficult because it's so far down there, you can't get anything down there. Um, so we've decided this recovery, uh, we're gonna build an excavator with a recovery boom on it with an actual wrecker boom on it. Yeah, that's happening. Hey, can you grab me another 20? Well, you might need two more 20s. Uh, two 20s can you grab another 20? rotator up you set it up because so it's not like a crane so a crane has a counterweight off the back of the house rotators don't have a counterweight off the back of the house the rotator is the counterweight so you bring the rotator up off the ground you have all the tires floating off the ground certain scenarios some scenarios I'll leave the tires on the ground but in a scenario like this where I'm lifting I'm gonna have tires off the ground but Finner's rotator and my rotator were floating at the same time and what's bad about that is if something happens with his rigging and my rotator takes the whole load, it, you know, some people might call that Western, if you will. So the whole time it was going up the hill, I thought it was going to fall apart. I was like, all right, this is going to be a... We're gonna be here for another 10 hours, cleaning up ramen, down a, was that about a 50, 60 degree angle slope. Picking, Pack, picking it out of the rocks, pick, package by package. Just one package at a time, up and down the hill. Yeah, one package of seasoning at a time. I can't believe how another. heavy ramen is. Like, you look at the truck and you think it'd be a light truck because it's full of ramen, but all that ramen together, it was, that was a heavy load. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was. It, it really was heavy. Uh, and we started realizing, like, because we couldn't find a, find a bill of lading in there. So uh, we didn't know exactly how heavy it is. But I've worked recoveries where I've recovered them with noodles before. And usually it weighs like 15,000 pounds. This thing was loaded top to back, side to side. It was completely roof to uh, floor. It actually was pretty heavy. Uh, I think it's like 30, 38,000 pounds in the box. So. Colin's our ground man today. 
He's in charge down here on the bottom, and let me tell you, his head is just like, huh? A massive brain. You just look smart. With My those ego's glasses. getting close to Ricky's. In size. I don't have an ego. Why are your glasses at, all crooked like look that? Look at Hot Rod doing this. Like fucking bent? No. This? No, it's like bent down like that. That? Huh. No, it's not. These are Wayfarers. That's how they come? Wayfarers? Yeah, you've never had wafers. I have those, but mine come off straight. No, they don't. You hit because you have that new, new age Justin Bieber wafers. The Bieber's real wafers are raked like that. These are real wafers, not that retro. Oh, this prescription? Yeah. If I'm, I mean, if you have to have a prescription for 2020 vision, yes, they're a prescription. Me too. I had to have a piece of steel ground out of my eye the other day. Me too. Like five times. How about Hot Rod over there just doing an outstanding job? What if we put chains and shackles on the holes? Once we got it on its wheels, we got it belly chained, we started pulling it up the hill, and the tie rod was buckled, so the wheels, one wheel was, they were they were basically snow plowing, going up the, up the, the hill. Um, they were fighting each other. So once we started pulling up the hill, then also the fuel tank came out, and the fuel tank started actually wanting to roll the tractor the other way. So the tractor almost rolled the other way. We stopped it. And we figured uh, the fuel tank straps are broke. We could just throw a chain on it and tug it out of there with a skid steer real quick. That turned into a bit of a battle. Also, where we were at in that basin, it was really soft dirt. So we had Freebird down there, but Freebird just kept wanting to dig down and down and down because it was such soft dirt, so it couldn't get a good bite. Uh, that was where we were running into some issues too, I noticed. It wasn't wanting to get a good bite on it. So we had to have the other skidster behind it too, anchoring it down, dig a hole, anchor it down even more, just to be able to get a good bite on it. Cause it just kept bringing us forward and pushing dirt and digging us down. 
Yeah, it really was an easy recovery, folks. Rod asked me, you know, everybody's kind of like, why don't we unload this thing while we're on scene? So, because it'd be easier to bring it up out of there if it was unloaded. That, that is true. It would have been easier to bring it up out of there with it unloaded, but we couldn't get anything down there because of the steepness and the, to, to unload, you know, 40 pallets of ramen. Even um, the parts from the truck, I, had, I was the one that brought the parts from the, down there up to the top with the skid steer. And I thought every, all the whole way up there, just I just did probably five trips, and just in those five trips, I thought I was gonna roll backwards and the skid steer going up there. So yeah, I can only imagine doing a hundred trips with ramen back and forth. Or, or and that's forever. one thing with YouTube that I've noticed that it, the cameras like, and actually I watch other YouTubers videos now, and I'll watch it and I'll be like, wow, that's actually steep. That's steep. That's the cameras just don't do it justice. We actually, we, we have a new cameraman. He was one of our YouTube fans. He's coming on. He filmed a little bit of this recovery. But yeah, it, it just, it's, it's so much steeper than it looks like. And so we had a bunch of ideas. Uh, <clears throat> these guys more so than I did. Uh, they had a bunch of ideas of, you know, how to get this ramen out of that trailer and up the hill. Uh, so what, what were some of your ideas? Car hood strapped to my three-wheeler, a boat, we're going to load the ramen in the boat down there, go down the stream and unload it somewhere else, dirt bikes, we're going to have uh, five I mean, company dirt bikes there on, a, on your dime. So then the other thing is, is on the other side, down there, there's a there's a, a river. It's a dry, dry wash, but it was running because we've had so much weather. It was it was actually running, you know, almost full capacity. So we couldn't get nothing across that. So I mean, at one point, these guys were even like, "Well, what if we bring a flat bottom jet boat?" Yeah, and unload the ramen into the flat. I mean, they had so many ideas that were going to be so much more work. Granted, it was 3 a.m. Uh, after work and yeah, the first was, night and we were, we're they, were, they were spitballing. I I don't remember all, all the ideas. They suck though. Like the only, what we would have done had, we had to unload that, but we have roll off dumpsters. We would have sent the roll off dumpsters down there and then hooked cables to them, loaded them up, dragged the roll offs out. But I knew we could get it out all in one piece and I was, you know, I never doubted myself. Not once. I was doubting it the whole way. Yeah, I, I know everybody else was. No, nobody ever trusts me. So, uh, but yeah, that's why we didn't unload the trailer. Uh, I don't think it would have been easier. I think we would have had more hours into it. And this is, it was an older tractor, an older trailer. It had been turned down by other towing companies. I'm not going to mention names, but uh, I'm not sure why, maybe they, I know why they didn't want to do it, you know, and I'm talking to you guys, so. Uh, I know you're watching. Yeah, I know you're watching. Hating, I'm sure you guys will be the, you guys are probably the haters. We see the thumb down. Yeah. <laughs> we get the names on that. Yeah, we get the, we, we see your secret names.
hope he learns his lesson. He don't belong in the fucking head.
put tinsel right over there. Right there.
good stuff. I'll tell you what, this recovery has cost us a lot of money. We have damaged more rigging than this recovery than 10 recoveries. Let's roll. Uh, we got some new hats. Get on our online store, check it out. We have a link right over here to go to our online store for all of our Murphy's Diesel merch. So be sure and check that out. We got a bunch of new hats on there. So get yourself a Murphy's Diesel hat, sweatshirt, t-shirt, stickers, whatever. We also got some uh, rigging on there too, so check that out. Wreck or Rick Ropes. Everything went really well with the recovery. Um, we came, we saw, we recovered. We didn't scratch a corner on that bad Larry, regardless of what the video shows. Um, that ramen put up a, a bit of a fight, you know, but ramen's like trout, it always gives in. Cascadias are like trout. They always give in. So, you know, once we just got a hold of it, we reeled it right in. So, uh, yeah, everybody did a hell of a job. You know, Hot Rod did a hell of a job, especially when he got a hold of Skinny Ham Porter. And uh, showed Skinny, skinny Ham Porter who, who the boss was. AKA Angle Grinder. AKA Angle Grinder. So you stay classy, Freightliner Cascadia that's missing its forward drive axle, driver's side fuel tank, 250 foot down an embankment that we couldn't get any equipment down to that every other towing company in northern, northern Arizona turned down. Loaded with ramen and completely destroyed that we thought every inch that we pulled it up is gonna come apart. Like and subscribe, even if you don't like it, just hit that subscribe button. We need subscribers, folks. Bad. Yeah, we need to send Hot Rod to school, and he needs braces. <laughs> so, you guys are gonna pay for it. Looks like you could sharpen a pencil with that mouth. Looks like you just stick a pencil in there. <laughs> so please subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. I mean, for Pete's sake, do it for Rod. Uh,